Um, now, we're going to talk about a woolly mammoth or mastodon. Um, the radioactive element carbon-14 has a half-life of 5750 years. Now, what this means is, okay, let's get the formula, the basic general formula for exponential decay. Or should I write it here? Formula for exponential decay. A equals A naught E to the KT. Now your book says negative KT, but I disagree with that. Because if you leave it like this, then K automatically becomes negative. So we're just going to do it the way it should be done. K is called the decay constant. T is time, but here it could be time in seconds, in minutes, in hours, in years, in centuries, in, in uh, um, millennia. It can be anything the scientist says it is. OK, so T is just time. For banking problems, T is years. And for business problems, well, T could be months or weeks. Now, it's only with banking problems that T must be years. For other kinds of problems, the problem has to tell you. Okay, so this is just time by any measurement. A naught is the original amount of whatever it is you're measuring. Or rid, or rid, no, goodness gracious. More coffee, more coffee. Original. Amount. The, the story tells you what the amount is. Except here it doesn't. And A, oh, but not A0, just A, is the amount after a long time, or after the decay, the amount after the decay, amount left, let's say that, the amount remaining, oh, that's nice. I didn't turn. Oh, I didn't turn my phone off. I'm going to do that right now. Am I going to do it right now? Yes, power off. Oh, I feel better already. Okay, radioactive element, carbon-14 has a half-life. What is a half-life? Well, as you're going to see in this problem, half-life half -life, incidentally, is the way that most um, radioactive substances, whether they're medicines or whether they're uranium, 
Um, it's the way that that their strength, their enduring strength is discussed. So anytime you see a radioactive substance mentioned, usually the half-life is mentioned as well. Well, what the half-life is, is when the remaining amount is half of what you started with. So that would be one half of the original amount. That's the amount you have over here. That's what half-life is. And that's what we're dealing with. There are some interesting, there is an interesting discussion of half-life over here. It's not a discussion, but with a table. Uh, for instance, polonium. Oh, how about lead? Lead has a half-life of 10.7 minutes. Iodine, must be radioactive iodine, has a half-life of eight days. Krypton has a half-life of 11 minutes. 12 minutes. Uranium has a half-life of 9.1 minutes. Plutonium has a half-life of 24,100 years. Plutonium is what's used in hydrogen bombs. And I, yeah. Yeah, in, in hydrogen bombs. Those are the really bad nuclear bombs, if you can call any of them good. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We've got this carbon-14, and it has a half-life of 5,750 years. A scientist determined that the bones from a mastodon, one of those woolly elephants, that existed during the, uh, the Ice Age, had lost 67.5% uh, of its original carbon-14. All of us have carbon-14 in us. And when there aren't a lot of volcanoes going off, putting more carbon into the atmosphere, then that carbon-14 decays at a, then the amount of carbon 14 we have in us tends to stay constant during our lifetimes and generally constant for everything living and then it decays at a what under most circumstances is a um, predictable rate so that's how scientists tell or try to tell how old something is is they measure like this, this mastodon, they find a mastodon bone, they measure the amount of carbon-14 in it, or in a section of it, and compare that, well, they know that 100% of the carbon-14 would have been in the, in the mastodon when it was alive. Once it died, though, it, it stopped taking in carbon-14 from the air and from plants and, and from other sources of carbon-14. So the carbon-14 started to decay. Um, and that's what they're saying here. They found a mastodon bone, and the mastodon had already lost 67.5% of its original um, um, percent of carbon-14. And what was that? Well, it was the 100% when it was alive, and then after death, it starts decaying. Uh, the body decays and the carbon-14 decays also. So, originally, our mastodon, mastodon dead, mastodon dead, Mastodon alive.
this mastodon had 100% of its carbon-14. Okay, but now it's already lost 67.5% of its original 100%. So how much has it got left? Because A here means the amount remaining, not the amount it lost. So these are trick problems. Most people are going to go with 67.5%, and it's not what the problem says. It says it has lost 67.5%. So to find out what A is, the amount remaining, that's going to be 100% minus 67.5%. Okay, now what we're being asked to do is this, is to find out how old the bones, how old were the bones at the time they were discovered? So this is actually a two-part question. The first thing we have to do is we have to find K. You can't do anything until you find K. So, we're talking about half-life here. Radioactive element carbon-14 has a half-life of 5750. That's going to give us our K. Almost always, you find the K of your formula by using the half-life. So, here we go. The formula for half-life is one-half A naught. That's half the original amount. Equals A naught e to the kt. But we do know the half-life and it's 5750 years. Now this is right. Okay, one half A naught equals A naught, the original amount, times E to the 5750 K. All right, now we divide by the number in front of the E. That's always what you do once you get your equation. If there's a number there, you divide by that number. If all you've got is A naught, you divide by A naught. And now one half equals E to the 57, 50 times K. Now we take the LN of both sides. So we're going to have the LN of one half equals 5750K times the LN of E, which is Yes. So, the ln of one half equals 5750K. And I will divide 
both sides by 5750. And that's what your K is. Now there's a problem. It's a minor problem, but it's a problem. With this problem, and that is getting the answer you need to get in my math lab for my math lab to call your answer correct. You need to know exactly how many places to round the exact solution for K to. How many places are we going to round to? Well, let's go look. All they're asking for is the year of the bone, or the, the years old that the bone is, or how many years ago it died. Um, it says the radioactive element carbon-14 has a half-life of 5750 years. A scientist determined that the bones of a mastodon had lost 67.5% of their carbon-14. How old were the bones at the time they were discovered? At no time are you told how many places to round K2. This is a problem. You can't just say, well, I feel like rounding it to four decimal places. Because if you don't round it to the exact number of decimal places my math lab wants, you will get the wrong answer. Therefore, at the moment, we cannot find the exact, I mean, that is the exact answer. We cannot find a calculator approximation, but at least we've got the exact answer. So what we're going to do here is we are going to keep in mind that all we have to do to get K is use this. We know what K is. We just don't know what it is in the calculator. So now there's no problem. Believe it or not, there is no problem. Because we don't really need the calculator approximation. We are now able to find out how old the bones were when they were discovered. And now here's what we're going to do. We're going to use A equals A naught But now we're going to use it with the second part of the problem. A scientist determined that the bones from a mastodon had lost 67.5% of their carbon-14. How old were the bones at the time they were discovered? Okay, well, we need to know what was the amount of carbon-14 remaining. 100% minus 67.5% is 32.5%, which translates to 0.325. So the amount of carbon-14 remaining in the bones, which is what A stands for, is 0.325 times A naught, which is of A naught. 32.5% of A naught is 0.325 times A naught. Equals A naught, E to the KT. So now I've got this. Now, I am going to divide both sides of the equation by the number in front of E, which is A naught. K 
K, we now know, remember, K is down there. We know what it is. So it's not a variable anymore. It's actually a number. Just thought I'd tell you. Okay, the A naughts cancel out. What we're left with is 0.325 equals E to the K, which we know, times T, which we don't know, but that is going to equal, we hope, 9,324. We don't know that yet though. So I'm going to take the ln of both sides of the equation. So that will be the ln of 0.325 equals K, which we know, times T, times the ln of E, which is one. one. One, and will always remain one, I hope. So now, this is what I've got, the ln of 0.325 equals K times T, I know what K is, so to find T, I'm going to divide both sides by K. Over here, the K's cancel, so now here is what I know that T equals. The ln of 0.325 over parentheses, the ln of one half divided by 5750. And I put the extra parentheses in there because that's what we're going to need when we calculate that answer. Here we go. LN, 0.325, close parentheses, divided by, paren, LN, 0.5, close parentheses, divided by 5750, close parentheses. Enter. There, there. Have you ever seen anything so beautiful? All right. There now. All right, now we go up here and we see if they actually told us how many places to round the answer to. Round to the nearest integer, whole number. So we're going to look on the left side of the decimal. This is the nearest integer. Well, it's an integer. Now I look over to the right to the five, and the, so that will give us 9,324. Yes, it will. <laughs>